Hi, welcome to Ringside with Kayla. Today I have the Adam Blue Nose Lopez. Thank you so much for being here with me today. How are you? Of course, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good as well. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so to start off, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and what it was like? Uh, my childhood, I was um, I was raised by my mother. Um, my dad, he was he was kind of in and out of the picture. Um, a lot. So my, I was kind of raised by a single mother, my mom. Um, so, you know, everything I, I got to get back to her. She really held it down for me and my older brother. Um, um, yeah, it was tough, but, you know, we, we made it happen. And she definitely was the, the biggest support system I had growing up. So um, boxing was not something like sh she didn't want me or my brother to box. So she put me in a bunch of other sports. I played, I played everything. I played basketball. I played soccer. I played baseball. Uh, she really wanted me to do anything but box, but she knew it was something that me and my brother always wanted to do because my dad was a fighter. So, um, um, you know, eventually once I got to a certain age, um, I kind of found a gym locally, like near my school. And I kind of started doing it on my own with my brother and, um, she she supported it. She said, if this is something you guys want to do, she's like, I'll support you. But you guys have to do this like 100 percent. Like, it's not like she said, it's just it's not like any other sport you guys have done. You guys got to understand it's tough and it's going to ask a lot of you. And, um, you know, when you're young, you're just like, all right, cool, let's go do it. Um, But I definitely learned that it's it's a tough one to, to do. But I love it. I've, I've always loved it. Is your brother older or is he younger? He's a year and a half older than me, so we're pretty close in age. Um, but yeah, he's older brother. Okay, and then um, also I really want to know, um, outside of boxing, what are some of your hobbies and interests? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have two big dogs, um, so they kind of take up a lot of my time. We go hiking a lot, we go to the parks. Um, I like being outdoors. Um, and then I also enjoy training. I like training other fighters as well. So sometimes even when I don't have a fight coming up, I'm always in the gym um, helping out. Even just young amateurs I see just in the gym, just punching, barely learning. Like I'll give them a little tips here and there. It's something I really enjoy um, just being around boxing and just teaching, teaching these kids. Cause you know, when I was younger, boxing really helped me just like mature and learn things about life. So um, sometimes I try to get it back. Um, so yeah, my dogs, boxing, um, I like playing video games sometimes. Uh, I like bowling. Uh, I recently started going to a lot of escape rooms. I started doing some escape rooms. So I try to just, you know, try different things, see, see what I like. Okay, yeah, that's super cool. I've been really wanting to try escape rooms, but I might have to try that soon. Um, that's fun. Yeah, also, um, okay, I know your dad was a former fighter as well. How's your father influenced your career in boxing and what role has he played in your training? Um, he influenced everything about boxing. Um, I remember as a kid, I'd go to the gyms with him and I'd watch him spar and um, do his road work and training. And it was, as a kid, you know, looking up, you know, you look at your father and your parents like superheroes. So I looked at him as, you know, like the greatest fighter of all time. So I was like, I want to follow what he's doing. I want to do what he's doing. Um, so he definitely put that seed in me and he definitely um, made me want to do what I'm doing now. But um, as far as um, a role in my training, he, he, I didn't really train with him too much. I think I may be trained with him for like a couple of weeks here and there. Um, he was, he was always in and out of jail, kind of like my whole childhood. And then when he got out for a, a long, he did like a, a long nine years, he got out, they sent him straight to Mexico. So I didn't really get to see him too much. Um, but when I went to go visit him in Mexico, that's when I trained with them. And um, I had a great time, you know. I would only go see him for about two weeks at a time. But we'd do our training. We'd run in the mornings, go spar and all that. So um, he kind of showed me, like, this is what it takes to really be a fighter. Like, this is what you want to do. This is what it's going to take. So he kind of showed me that. But, I mean, it's kind of been me and my brother really pushing it ourselves and figuring it out. Uh, my dad did pass away when I was 15, so um, he didn't have a huge role in my training, like even up to date. You know, it's it's just been me just figuring it out. Yeah, um, you know, I'm really sorry about your loss, but it's really good how um, you're able to 
you know, learn from him and, you know, kind of follow his steps and kind of find your own inspiration from that. Um, Definitely. Yeah, and then I know you faced several tough opponents in your career. I really, actually, I really admire how you put yourself through some really uh, competitive fights and, you know, your fights are super exciting to watch as well. Um, who has been your toughest opponent so far and how did you prepare for that fight? Uh, my toughest opponent, I would say... Um... When I fought Louis Correa, he was the fight I had. Um, I had I fought him during COVID. It was the first fight of COVID. Um, right after I fought Oscar Valdez, the first fight. Um, COVID hit. Um, the preparation for the fight wasn't the best, so COVID had hit. All the gyms were closed down, so I was I was just staying at home. Like, wasn't going to the gym. I wasn't training much. I was running here and there, hitting the bag at my house here and there. Um, and that was for like a solid month, month and a half. And then I finally got back in the gym. Um, and then they gave me the phone call, like, Hey, we got to fight for you in like four, it was like five, maybe six weeks. Um, and I was like, shit, man, I haven't really been training, but my weight was good at the time. Like I always kept my weight in check. So I was like, all right, you know, let's go do it. Um, and I went into the fight and he was training with Robert Garcia. So Robert has his own gym. So their gym was open the whole time during COVID. So he was already uh, training. And so for me, I felt like I was just kind of flat getting into it. But um, it was a tough, that was probably one of my toughest fights for sure. That kid did not stop coming. Uh, I had to really dig deep for that one. Um, it was a close fight. Um, but yeah, I definitely say that's my toughest fight. Um, how was that experience, you know, like training in the middle of COVID where everything was closed down? Like, I bet like it was super hard to like do everything. Yeah, it was weird. You know, at first when COVID hit, like we didn't know what it was. So my manager at the time, he said, don't go to the gym, stay at the gyms. We don't need you catching COVID. Um, so, you know, I stayed out. I just trained on my own a little bit here and there, just kept my weight down. Um, but the weird, it was weird fighting during COVID because there was no fans. Um, you know, it was just fighting in an empty room it was really weird because I mean usually you hear people screaming and cheering but all I could hear was his coach Robert and my coach who was buddy at the time just hear them yelling and you hear the punches flying that's all you could hear like it was it was an awkward experience I think I fought twice during COVID um but yeah I didn't I didn't like that <laughs> and then um now like especially knowing how um, but the difficult boxing is especially like mentally for fighters um how do you prepare yourself mentally for a fight and what strategies do you use to stay disciplined and focused um I feel like you gotta really um you can't let yourself get comfortable you gotta catch yourself off guard at times you gotta um do things you're not used to doing um so at, for this camp, what I started doing is I started taking a cold shower as soon as I wake up. As soon as I wake up, I jump in the cold shower. And it was the hardest thing to do at first, you know, because you wake up, you want to chill, you want to eat something and relax. But like as soon as I wake up, boom, I jumped in the shower. And um, I feel like it just kind of woke me up a little bit. Um, and definitely, I don't know what it did, but it just it's got me going. Um, but I feel like you just got to you got to challenge yourself every chance you can, like. You can't keep doing the same thing. You can't run the same route every single day. Like some days I'll do runs, some days I'll do sprints, some days I'll do bleachers, some days I'll jump in the pool and I'll do laps. So I'm just always trying to keep myself on my toes, always not letting my body get comfortable to the regular training. I always got to mix it up. And that's something I kind of just learned throughout my camps. Um, I always try something different. So I, I realized I got just got to keep keep trying new things, keep trying new things and see what my body gets accustomed to. And then, um, you know, I know in this sport, it's also really important to, you know, have that sort of confidence in yourself. Um, how important is self-belief in your success as a boxer and how do you cultivate that belief in yourself? Yeah, self-belief is, I think, everything. If you want to be a professional fighter, it's definitely everything because, I mean, you're coming up from the bottom, you know, there's so many fighters out there and what's going to make you stand out um you got to believe it you got to see it you know that's one thing i realized you got to have a vision um when i was younger you know you have that vision and nobody can really see it but just yourself and they might not 
understand it. They might not, you know, support it, but you got to just trust and believe in yourself and, and work very hard at it. And, you know, it eventually pay off. Everyone gets their opportunity. You just got to be ready for it. Um, okay, thank you. And then um, I know also you're the coming event for the Haney versus Lomachenko fight. Um, and you have your upcoming fight with Oscar Valdez. How does it feel having that rematch again with him? I'm very happy they brought this fight up. Um, honestly, I didn't see it coming. I did not expect it to come uh, at this time. But, um, you know, it makes sense. He's coming off of a loss. I'm coming off of a loss. Um, you know, I still got a lot of life in me. We're going to see what Oscar got left. Um, I think it's a great card. I, I'm really happy it's on this card. I've never been on a pay-per-view card before, so it'll be my first time. Um, and us being the co event is even, you know, makes it that much more exciting. So I'm definitely excited. I'm definitely been working very hard for this opportunity. Um, and I'm glad that Top Rank and um, Oscar's giving me another shot. Yeah, and then, um, you know, speaking of, the fight in the main fight, uh, Devin Haney versus Lomachenko. Uh, what's your take? I mean, what's your take? What's your take on that um, fight between them two? Uh, I think it's a good fight. Um, I'm glad they're giving Lomachenko um, a shot at the belts again because, you know, he, he lost him to T.O. and he hasn't seen he hasn't seen the belt since then. So I know he's definitely hungry for it. Um, Haney, he's a great fighter, you know. Um, very talented. I just think he's, I mean, he's kind of a boring fighter. I don't mean to, to put him down, but he, he could box very well. And, you know, a lot of people, they kind of fall asleep on fighters. Like those, those, those are the fighters that don't sell tickets like that. They don't sell pay-per-view sales too often, but Lomachenko is definitely going to bring the fight to him. Uh, I'm excited. I think it's a 50, 50 fight. Uh, I'm kind of leaning a little more towards Haney just because he's got the youth behind him. But um, I think Loma uh could pull it off if he digs deep and he gets on if if he breaks if he breaks him down early I think he can win the fight. Okay, and then also thinking of this past weekend with you know the huge fight with Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia, uh, what did you think about that fight? Um, you know Ryan's very talented, but uh, I think there's just levels to this game. Um, I think uh Javante exposed him. He exposed uh the. Ryan has been relying on his skills his whole career. He's been relying on his speed. He's been relying on his power. Um, and But the basic fundamentals is, is what he's lacking um, from what I noticed. You know, I feel like it was just different levels. Am he kind of looked like an amateur in there. You know, he was smothering his shots. He was kind of off balance. His hands were down. Like, just little things that um, you you learn that early on in your career, you know, and you should, you should get checked early on in your career about those things. And, you know, but hats off to Ryan for, you know, stepping up and taking that fight. I hope he learns from it. I hope he goes home and studies the fight and fixes all those little things he got to fix because he's a great fighter and he can still come back from this. Okay. And then my last question for you is how does it feel um, having the opportunity to fight for the coming event for one of the biggest fights of the year? And, um, you know, to have that spotlight, you know, shine on you after multiple years of hard work. It feels great. You know, I, I've been working very hard and I'm glad that I'm getting this opportunity. Um, this is this is my shot. You know, they're giving me a shot again. I had the shot before. Didn't go my way. But, you know, I'm, I'm making sure I'm working very hard and I come out on top on this fight. So I'm very excited. Um, definitely looking forward to it. It's gonna be a great fight. It's gonna be a, a. It could be fight of the year. You know, it really could be. We gonna we gonna go to war for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today, and I really really appreciate it. And I look forward to watching your next fight. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye.